Season 2, Episode 15, Getting Comfy and a Healthy Work Environment. So, for those of you who are brand new, if you guys want to stay updated with what's going on, I run an FL Studio training platform. You can check out the courses on there. And I have lots of free stuff, okay? So if you're new, check the free stuff. See if you like my education, my content. If you do, keep opening up the emails and I'll send you some sales about joining the membership. All right, there's, there's, at the moment, there's 26 FL Studio courses, uh, but I want to talk about um, getting comfy and a healthy work environment. So I've been going through a couple health things, guys, uh, nothing serious, but things that have made me question how I'm working. All right. Cause when I was an electrician, it's a totally different work environment, right? Depending on the season, you know, in the summer where I live, it got very hot and sometimes you had no shelter. So you just be in the sun and it's hot and you have to work. <laughs> so that's one environment. Okay. And you have to dress accordingly. Like in that case, you know, sunscreen, making sure that you get shade when it's hot, making sure you drink a lot of water. Let's talk about winter being in construction, let's say now. Well, you know, so it takes a lot of skill to dress good in the winter for construction. The older you are, the more tricks you learn. But there's a lot of different equipment that you can wear to stay warm. Everything from long johns and how you layer. Now, there's some types of, of equipment, let's say, in construction that relate no matter the season. And, we're, and now we're talking more safety, okay? So, because really, uh, dressing for the summer and dressing for the winter, it is a safety thing, right? In the summer, you can get heat stroke. In the winter, you can actually, uh, like, you can burn your fingers. I worked up north this one time and the foreman on the job site, he told me, he said, you be careful. Like you make sure that you're always wearing gloves when you're touching metal because you know, where I live, it doesn't get to those like cold, cold, uh, temperatures. But he was saying like, you know, that is a concern up here, like where it was so cold. So those are things you don't think about. So, um, now I want to more talk about like, let's say like your eyes, you know, everyone, you always have to wear safety glasses to protect yourself in construction if you're cutting. And if something's too loud, you know, your hearing protection, which perfectly segues into this episode with music production, safety, right? Like, you know, how can we sit in our environment and make sure that we're comfy? And so, like I said, I went, uh, you know, I was dealing with a couple health things. And so the first thing I'll talk about is my eyes, okay? So I have to look at a screen a lot. And that's because in order for me to make music, well, yeah, just like you guys, I have to make music. You know, I have I need to keep practicing. Because if I'm not practicing, then I can't teach because I'm not in the zone. Like, I'm not in it with you guys. And so how much time do you sp spend producing? And that's kind of like a different episode, but really like, you know, if ask yourself, is it an hour a day? Is it two hours a day? When I was getting into this, sometimes it was like four, five, six, seven, eight hours a day. Sometimes, you know, obviously some days were more than others, but it was all depending on what you're doing and what you're learning. Sometimes you might be making the beat. Sometimes you're listening to the beat. That's all different, you know, stages of the production process, but to finish off uh, the hearing protection, right? You always have to protect your ears as a music producer. So, you know, make sure you're not listening at super loud levels. Another thing I want to mention on that is loud levels matter, but it's also the time, like the amount of time that you're listening to something as well. Okay. Does that make sense? Because that's important for you to know, to know about safety. Because if you're dealing with earplugs or headphones on a construction site, uh, these uh, can block out different frequencies and they block them out by a certain decibel amount, okay? So a lot of these units that we use in music, like decibels, those relate in different areas of the world as well, you know? So don't just think it's just audio or just music. If somebody is working in like a factory, they're always listening to the same sounds all the time, depending on where their workstation is. So they have to wear certain ear protection that is blocking out certain frequencies because what can happen if you're listening to the same frequency over time is you become tone deaf, okay? 
that's like, think about that word. If you don't know what that means, like it's like certain frequencies, like you can't, you can't listen to very well. So essentially it's like your ear is hearing like a notch filter all the time. You know, it's like, it's like the mass, it's like the EQ is on the master track and you have a notch filter in your own hearing. And this can be caused by listening to audio at too loud for too long. Okay, how long you listen to something can really hurt your ear. Now, I want to share in case you want a visual of this. Okay, so if you open up the Fruity Parametric EQ2, the stock EQ for FL Studio, but you can right click on a band, you're going to go type, and you're going to see band stop. I want you to do this, select it and look at that. And so that's what can happen to like your ear. And if you move it left and right, that can happen to your ear if you are listening at a like to a tone such as like let's say a motor or again depending on where someone's working you listen to a tone so like your ear is becoming deaf in those frequencies first of all you can listen to that tone but you want to reduce it so it doesn't cause damage okay now on the fab filter pro q3 this is now called a notch filter okay so again many times within the audio industry we have different terms for the same thing okay so what I'm trying to talk about is what are our safety things in the studio? All right. I hope that kind of broke down. And especially if you do work, you know, that would break down things that you have to think about safety, because if you don't, it's like you can really harm your body. And when you're young, like nine, let's say 19 years old, you're super, super young. And so now as I'm starting to get a little older, some of these things are starting to affect my body. And um, what I was also trying to say is because I switched from electrical to now doing online education full time. So I'm even looking at a screen more now. Okay. So this is really amplified for me. And I want to share this with you so that I might save you some, you know, I might get you more comfy. <laughs> I might allow you to protect your body. Cause like I said, I'm having, uh, I was dealing with a couple of some health things. So one was my eyes. And one was like my back, my back was starting to get really sore in different areas. And what I would always try to do is I'd always try to rotate chairs and it would kind of balance out if I switched enough chairs over a certain period of time. Um, you know, if one chair started hurting, I would get a different chair. So I did that for many, many years. Essentially, it all came down to being cheap and rushed and not looking after myself. So the first things I want to talk about is what are some things, okay, just so you're aware. So one is your eyes, all right? You're always looking at a screen. Maybe you can turn down the screen brightness a little bit. Just think these ways. Is your lighting environment okay? Like, do you have a light on with your screen? Because if you're just in a dark room, like, this is not good for your eyes. And you might not think it is right now until something starts, you know, let's say your eyes start getting really dry. Or like, for example, like, you know, there's drops for your eyes, but do you really want to start taking drops in your eyes for the rest of your life? You have to think that you want to protect yourself. And so there's this blue light kind of thing going on right now. I'm not a doctor. Again, don't listen to any of my medical advice. I should be saying that before we get into this as well. Okay, so I'm not a doctor or an ergonomic specialist. Okay, so I'm just a music producer and talking to you about my music production setup and some things that I want you to know about safety in your studio so that you can, you know, feel good, be healthy and enjoy your day. So the glasses that I've been prescribed, okay, because my eyes were starting to get dry on this on like by looking at a screen all the time. Again, I do, I make beats. If I were to create a course, well, I have to edit up all those videos. I have to do the graphic design. Or even if I'm doing this podcast, after I'm done recording it, I have to look at the screen. I have to chop up the voice. I have to edit it. So my eyes are always looking at a screen. So I've been prescribed glasses that gave me that give me a little bit of amplification my eyes are actually really good okay so it's not like i need glasses and i want to really stress that like everyone in my family needed glasses for either far or close sight everyone varied but for me my eyes have always been good okay like 2020 vision like super good vision but I was looking at a screen and my eyes were starting to get dry. And like, I just, it was started to lead to a little bit of headaches. 
And again, I, I don't know about the blue light stuff. It could be with that stuff, but it, for me, it was a couple things. Okay. First of all, um, hopefully I'm hoping these glasses are going to start helping me. Number two was how I was dealing with my time a bit. I was spending time on the computer more than what I should have been. Something that will really help you be productive is know what you want to do on a computer when you're on the computer. Like, don't just be on a computer just to be on a computer, if if that makes sense. If you think with that mindset, what you're going to do is you're going to take a paper and pen or pencil. I always like pencil. You can erase. But I write, you know, like, what are my goals for the day? And my goals might be a lot different than your goals. But if we're talking about making beats... I always like to tell you guys, I like to make beat tapes because it's something to work towards. Um, A single beat, again, you know, single beats are fine, but you just make the beat and it's kind of done with, right? It's a beat. But when you do a beat tape, it's kind of like a little series. People get to listen to that whole beat tape. Also, you get to practice a lot, right? I I talk about this often. So anyways, if you're going to write down your goal, maybe your goal on this beat tape that you're going to make And again, I'm not telling you guys to like sell this beat tape. It's just kind of like a portfolio that if someone comes to your website, they can download your beat tape. They can see what you're about. And for me, I just continued with that. So I got to a couple volumes now, right? So let's say this beat tape idea is intriguing to you. So what you could maybe do is you could could write down, you could say, I'm going to pick out the beats that I want to be on this beat tape because that is one step of the beat, uh, putting a beat tape together, right? That's one of the steps is that you have to figure out, well, what beats do you actually want on the beat tape? And it's not as easy as you think because sometimes your favorite beats aren't the favorite beats of what other people like of your music. But I always caution you guys, you know, you do want to release what you do ultimately like, but you can always get feedback. But, you know, so write down your goals before you hop on the computer. And I promise it's really, really going to help um, allow you to know what you're doing on a computer. You look at your list and you're kind of like, you know, what? I'm done for the day. And then when you come back the next day, if you want to look at that list, you can you can finish off that list. Don't feel that you have to finish off that list. But just what's your goal for the day? It's going to allow you less time on the screen unnecessarily. Like if you have to do a lot of work on the computer, like that's different, like, but you're being productive. Um, but I hope you get what I'm saying. Just instead of just being on a computer, you want to be on the computer for a reason. That's what I'm getting at. All right. Now the next one I want to talk about is your chair. So like I said, um, I always try to bounce between chairs Uh, to help fix my sore back and it was happening in a couple different areas depending on the chair I was sitting in and I'll actually tell you guys the different styles of chairs I was sitting in because it's really going to make you understand before we go further I do want to let you know that recently I just purchased an ergonomic chair I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it and if you look online to purchase these chairs, they're way, they're typically way more expensive. So my suggestion to you before we uh, go into this story about different chairs is you want to actually go to a store that you can try the chair because everyone's body is different. Okay. Sometimes these retailers can also give you a bit of a better price because they're distributors and that's just kind of how it works. Okay. Now, I'm actually talking about like an ergonomic chair. So what does that mean? Ergonomic means comfort, right? And man, there's ergonomic stuff for everything. Everything from your key, like your actual typing keyboard and mouse to like your chair, there's foot rests, like, and that's just sitting. But I guess like they have like those standing desks and stuff right now too. So again, I really want to stress that, that if you are looking for a comfortable chair, and they're not cheap, okay? We're looking like about like a thousand bucks for a nice chair. And But what I'm trying to say is I've, I've been sitting a lot. I've been on a computer a lot and I'm not 20, right? I've pushed my 30s. So, but I'm telling you that I've got a new chair and it is it is worth it. And it's something that we don't want to spend our money on either. And that is why I was saying kind of like cheap and lazy and not looking after myself, because, right, the chair is expensive. Now, let me just tell you a little bit of the story. It's going to help you understand what I've learned. 
So like I said, I was always bouncing between chairs. I would bounce between chairs with, uh, you know, with a back. I tried a kneeling chair, all right? I purchased one off Amazon. It was like a hundred bucks, let's say, in that, you know, it was a cheap one. And I was just thinking, oh, a kneeling chair would be good, uh, you know, for better posture. But, you know, over time, it's kind of like, um, it wasn't super comfy. And, you know, I want to be sitting. I don't want, like, a kneeling chair was kind of like a workout. So there's that. Now, another problem that was happening is um, I have two different desks I work at. I work at like my studio desk, which is where I make my beats and stuff. Like that's where I do uh, music and courses and the, even the podcast. But when I do work, I typically like to not always be in the same room because like I said, I would be in the same room all the time and you're always in the same position. And so that is one, that's probably the first thing I'll tell you is taking a, you know, taking a quick break, standing up, go get some water, uh, look around, you know, especially if it's the daytime, if you have a view, you know, if you can, if there's like nice trees or something, like look at the trees for a little bit and then you can go put back in your session, like however long you usually work. Um, so taking breaks is going to help your back and shoulders and arms and all that stuff. Right. So another problem that was happening to me is depending on the environment I was working in, different pain points were happening. So I tend to like to reach for my mouse. If I'm sitting in a chair, sometimes like I'm, I'm hunched and I'm looking forward. And so that's not good. Okay. You're going to get like upper back pain, which is what I was getting. It was actually getting kind of bad, like to the point where just like, I just had to like lay there and just like take a break. I was like, I'm actually in pain from sitting. Okay. So it's just because I pushed, <laughs> I pushed it too far. Now, again, this is all depending on your sitting environment, all that stuff. So what I wanted to say is that I purchased an ergonomic chair, something I should have done many, many years ago. And I'm just trying to tell you guys that it's worth it. Now, the brand I purchased, it's by Steelcase. For my research, they seem to be like the industry leader. And I got the Leap version 2. I tried a couple different chairs. Again, I did it locally. And one thing I will say is I got a very good deal on it locally because of a local distributor. I, I remember looking on Amazon for this chair and it was like double, maybe even double and a little bit more. Go try the chair out and then you justify, you know, is it worth it? I tried a couple of different brands. I don't want to go in, into tons of different brands and, and I'm not sponsored. Okay. I, I don't do the sponsorships on the podcast. It's just me. Okay. So I purchased a chair. I'm telling you guys, it's been amazing. My comfort is much better. My back's much better. And I'm telling you, it was pain. Like it was to the point where I had to stop. Like it's just case okay, stop. The chairs definitely helped that. But all of these things really did come down to really second guessing what I'm doing on a computer. Okay. And uh, that's really going to help hopefully you just to double check on, you know, what's the purpose of you being on a computer right now? If you're on a computer, your eyes, what I did was I purchased a, just a single monitor stand and I brought one screen close. So it wasn't too expensive of an upgrade. It was like the stands like 120 bucks. Again, I bought that locally. So now instead of me reaching forward and hurting my upper back, right? I've brought the screen closer to me. I also have this old keyboard tray. If you've been around since the beach struggles day with that desk, I still have that same desk and the same keyboard tray. So that was definitely a good purchase. That was nine years ago, eight years ago. A keyboard tray, again, is one of those ergonomic things to get comfy. And a really huge benefit of them is it allows your MIDI keyboard to come closer to you. Uh, one thing I do want to say, uh, I was thinking about this is, okay, when you're sitting down, when it comes to comfort, I need you to actually sit in your studio and think about this. If you're moving your hand a certain direction or whatever's going on, are you comfy and is it a good workflow? Is something awkward? And so that's what this keyboard tray helps with. Okay. So it allows my typing keyboard to be right in front of me to use the computer if I'm doing research, typing things, and the mouse is also on this keyboard tray too. So it's pull out, right? I can pull it out. I can rotate it like back and forth. 
And it this one has a separate mouse pad. This allows you to bring your MIDI keyboard closer because when I make beats and use FL Studio, I'm using my transport buttons a lot, especially more in the beat making stages, like the very, very early stages of the beat. That's where I'm using the transport buttons a lot. Once it goes to the mixing, I'm often using my space bar. And now you're kind of in plug-in mode, right? You're going from EQ to compressor, reverb, whatever. You're always kind of with your mouse right now. So are you comfortable with your MIDI keyboard when you're making the beat? Which is kind of like, let's say, in the summer months or something. <laughs> All right, if that makes sense. Now, if we go to the winter months, now let's say we're into the arrangement, we're into the mixing, we're into the mastering. Now we're more a little bit laid back. We're more back into our chair. All right. And you want to make sure that this setup, that you are actually into your chair. Okay. Like, like, so what I'm saying is like, you need back support. And so that's what these ergonomic chairs do is like they rest up against your back. You want to make sure that you're in that chair. All right. And when you're using your keyboard and your mouse, it's kind of just like, it's just part of your comfortable kind of work environment. And again, it all comes down to getting up and taking breaks too. Yeah. I wanted to kind of compare it to, cause I was doing electrical now I started to be on the computer more like full time all the time, right? And so, you know, my eyes were starting to get a little bit dry. And I find that if I would go for a walk, like if, you know, if I go outside, like my eyes weren't as bad. And so when I was an electrician, well, I was outside all the time, right? So these are things I, I wasn't really realizing until now in front of a screen. One thing I do want to say about that is at first with my eyes, when they weren't doing great, I tried to be cheap again, and I tried to purchase these blue light glasses online. And I didn't purchase a super cheap one. I purchased, you know, a, a decent pair. But you have to remember, these are not from a trusted eye doctor. You know, someone you have been going to for a little bit, that you have done an eye exam with them. They've, you know, done what they needed to do to check your health, your eye health. And so, you know, a glasses that are prescribed for your eye... Well, these are professionals, right? And if you're trying to fix it yourself, you know, so all I'm saying is if you're going to be doing, if you think you need glasses for a computer or something, you make sure you go to the professional, right? Because if you do it yourself, you're just making the problem, you know, potentially worse. And again, it wraps around to asking yourself, what are you doing on a computer? You know, what's your end result being on the computer for that day? What do you want to get done that day? So, Hope that gets you thinking. For me, I'm getting a glasses upgrade. I've never worn glasses in my life. <laughs> All right. Um, the chair, I am so happy. Okay. Like I said, I didn't want to pay this price. You know, I was like, oh no. But my back was getting really sore. And it's no different than, like I said, if you're an electrician or a plumber or what, if you're in construction, you got to buy a new drill. You know, something that's a little bit more expensive that is supposed to last you for like, you know, that three, four, five years, right? You know, when you have a job, like the employer expects like a lot out of the worker, you know, like you have to drive to work in your own vehicle. And so these are like kind of hitting costs of your job, right? And so being a music producer, you know, these are kind of the hidden costs of being on a computer all the time. Right. And for me, you know, I'm a little bit more than just a music producer, right? Like I'm always kind of creating content, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm on it even more than, than I've ever been actually. But again, it all comes down to breaks need to be taken. Know what your goals are on the computer. Look at your sitting position. You know, is there good light going on? Is your chair comfy? Are you overreaching like I was? Again, I was getting upper back pain on, on certain chairs. I was getting lower back pain. And so, like I said, I try to mix and match between different chairs. And I'll also quickly talk about some things when it came to this chair in case you are interested in buying one. So now I'm not talking about like a $300 chair from like um, a box store that is like, you know, promises to be ergonomic. And another thing I want to say is don't think that the more expensive you pay in a chair, the better chair it is. The chair really does have to match your body type 
and your comfort and has the features you want. Like, so for example, these chairs are not just simple chairs. Like they're thinking about your work environment. They're like an aggressive work environment on the computer. And you may be like, well, what are you talking about? Again, I got the Steel Case Leap V2, or it could be the V1. I'm pretty sure it's the V2. Okay, I bought it recently. So these armrests, obviously, yeah, I can go up and down. Most armrests can do that. Another really powerful thing is that if you lean back, the armrests don't move because that's a problem sometimes. Like, for example, if you work close to a desk and if your chair goes underneath that desk, okay, and if it just goes under, it's like you can't lean back because the desk is preventing the armrests because they're essentially attached to the backrest. That's how it's made. And so when you rock, like the armrests go with the chair. Well, if you would go back hard enough, you know, you could flip the desk or you could, you know what I mean? So these nice ergonomic chairs, the arms don't move and it allows that flexibility in your back. Now you have a tension knob that determines, you know, if I lean back, how much force do I have to use to lean back? Because again, depending on the work environment you're in, you, you know, you might want to just always make sure you're sitting up straight so that you can work longer periods, more comfortable. Again, you can loosen it up and it could be more relaxed time. Like let's say, let's say you wanted to do some research and you wanted to watch a tutorial. So, you know, in my case, I would make it go full screen. I'd maybe loosen it up a little bit and I'd kind of stretch back a little bit. All right. Uh, the chair, uh, this one anyways, allows you to adjust the seat. So the seat can go forward and back because depending on if you're taller or shorter, you know, like if, if the seat's too short, it feels really, really awkward. And if it's too long, then like your legs hang. So you want it to be a sweet spot so that you got a nice setup going on. Okay. It also has what's called like a lumbar support. So this is like for like your lower back and uh, each chair has their own way of doing it, but it's something that just kind of slides up and down. All right. But it just gives you that support. And what makes this chair really nice is uh, it also has a tension. It allows that lumbar support to go in and out. So again, what I really want to stress with these ergonomic chairs is you don't want to be paying really anything less than like, let's say a thousand bucks. All right. I tried quite a few chairs. I went to, you know, big box stores where they had ergonomic chairs and they're like $300. And I thought $300 was a lot when I was trying those ones. But, you know, I went online and I was like... Because my back was sore, right? And it, to me, it wasn't no longer just to kind of buy a nice chair. It was like, I need to buy like a chair for work. And so I thought to myself, I was like, hmm, $300. Like that's quite a bit of money, you know, for a chair. And I was just like, well, let's see like, what are like the really good ergonomic chairs? Because I like to do research that way. I like to research like, you know, what's, what's like the most expensive in that category. And I work my way down and I kind of see how much, my, how much am I willing to spend at this moment? Anyway, so I tried quite a few chairs and this chair, which was a thousand dollars, again, went to a local dealer. So I got a good price on it online. It was like over $2,000 Canadian. Okay. When I went to the local distributor and found out it was, it was a, like around a thousand bucks. I was like, okay, like that's a fair price, right? Now there was another chair I saw at a different dealership and their chair online was a thousand bucks. And so it's the same price as this chair that I'm sitting in. Okay. And I tried it. It was pretty comfy, but it just felt like big, like the, like the chair felt huge. And it just kind of like, you know, in a, in a studio, you know, you want just like a kind of a chair that just feels like a normal chair, but you're just looking for comfort. And so that's what I wanted to pass on to you is that there was these two different chairs, both the same price. And I really do feel that this steel case leap V2 that I'm sitting in was like superior to that chair. Like it was just way more comfy. Now for the armrests, um, for example, yes, it can go up and down, but it can all like the actual arm rest can go forward and it can go back. It can go, uh, in more, it can twist. Okay. So it's, just, it's, if you watch some reviews on them, you're going to start to learn like different features that they can come with. Okay. So if you guys can think of any PPE 
is what we would call it on the job site, personal protective equipment. I think that's the, I think that's what it is. So PPE, right? So on a construction site, these were things like earplugs, hard hat, steel toe boots, right? Here in Canada, it has to have that green triangle, you know, to say it's certified for on the job site. Uh, Viz vest, right? You know, those are kind of like all like your kind of basic ones. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but you know, depending on what you're doing, you have to wear the right equipment, the right safety equipment. Now, one thing I will also say further with that is depending on what you're doing, you might have to wear an additional piece of this PPE. Okay. So uh, the PPE, so uh, the earplugs, hard hat, that's just for your typical worker. Everyone needs to wear that stuff. Okay. Like depending on what their task is, but let's say like you're angle grinding. Okay. So if you don't know what this is, it's like this, this disc that over time gets depleted by how much usage, but like they can like break free and like they're, they're actually dangerous at certain times. But so an ankle grinder, you got to wear like a face mask because of those uh, safety issues. And so in your environment, it might be a little bit different. Okay. You know, at different stages of the production process, it's kind of like, now we got to maybe put on different safety equipment. Like I said, when we're, when we were making the beat, I'd be more hunched over a little bit, but it's not like I'm just hunched over. It's more kind of like, you know, you're moving around a little bit. So whatever, you know, you're just, you're in the chair making the beat after you're done making the beat. Well, now you're going to go edit the notes. So now you're sitting back. So that's kind of like changing tasks essentially. And you have to reassess, well, you know, how can I stay safe here uh, for the long term? you know, to protect my body so I can feel good every day. The thing is, if things are going good, they're going good. You don't think about this type of stuff. You only think about this stuff after, once you're going through the pain. Like, like I said, my eyes were very, were, they're getting so, my eyes were getting so sore that I had to go to an eye doctor regarding this. Okay. What I was trying to tell you is that my eyes are great. I can see very, very good far and close. It was the screen that because of my if my change in work environment from electrical to teaching beat making, the podcast, just being on a screen more. And it's really made me realize that you have to protect yourself in these environments. But again, sometimes you don't know how. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys, uh, the things I learned. So hopefully, uh, if you're looking for a chair, that this information has helped you. Again, uh, do your research online, but then go to a local shop. I promise you, you're going to be way happier and I hope you find a better price like I did. For your eyes, again, make sure you have good lighting as well as do you need to bring your screen closer to you. Another thing I'll, I will mention is Windows allows you to zoom in your screen. Like you can go like 125% or 150%. FL Studio allows you to zoom in as well if you need that. So lots and lots of things to think about, you know, even drinking water. But again, you guys let me know if you have, you know, if you've had any issues and what were your ways to fix them. I think it would be interesting to know. And uh, thanks for checking out the episodes. So if you guys want to learn FL Studio and beat making, just visit my website, okay? Go to itsgratuitous.com. There will also be options if you're brand new, you know, to check out like my FL Studio Beginners book, and my FL Studio Beginners course. And finally, check out the membership where you can actually just watch all the courses and you get the best experience. And if you ever have questions or need help, I always tell you guys my email is open. So hi at itsgratuitous.com. And I will talk to you in the next episode. So thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.